Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. And um, this is an article from Zero Hedge, all right, titled, We Could See a Million Layoffs or More. Here comes the job market shock. Okay, we could see a million layoffs or more. Here comes the job market shock. And as we know, which I have here in the book of Ecclesiastes, scriptures talk about the grinding shall cease. And it seems that as, you know, each day goes by and each week goes by, more uh, problems keep arising. You know, they're just not stopping. And just, you know, just when you think you have an overview of, okay, well, we have this problem here, this problem here, this problem here, and then something else happens. It's like when uh, you have a machine and one part of it breaks. And so you think, okay, well, all I got to do is fix this part. But then you realize because that one part broke, it caused another part to break, another part to break. And then the, the more as you try to, you know, take an overview and see, okay, fix this, fix this, fix this, another one breaks. But that's like what's happening right now. Okay. So it says here, last weekend, we showed something remarkable or delightful. If one is a stock bull, it says, um, with the U.S. economy on the verge of recession, with inflation topping, with housing market about to crack, the last pillar holding up the U.S. economy and preventing the Fed from continuing its tightening plans beyond the summer. The job market had just hit brick hit a brick wall as revealed by real time indicators such as Revelo's measure of total job postings, which plunged by twenty two point five percent the The biggest change on record we also listed several other labor market metrics confirming that the job market was about to crater okay and once again, this is um, this is uh, going towards the the you know the direction of you know you not owning anything and you know having a smile about it. Okay, so it says here. Fast forward to today, when one day after we found that initial jobless claims continue to rise after hitting a generational low in March. And as company after company is warning that it will freeze hiring amid a historic profit margin crunch, if not announce outright layoff plans. All right. So companies are warning they're going to start freezing hiring. All right. And they're going to start announcing layoff plans. Piper Sandler has compiled all the recent companies or company mass layoff announcements. Uh, They they are in a a word startling. Okay, and then there's, you know, all these different companies. You have some in the tech, real estate, finance, uh, financial, streaming, grocery, fintech, e-commerce, AI. All right. Education. And they're and they're having, you know, what does it say here? Yeah. Estimated number. Some of them are hiring, freezing. Uh, They're they're freezing, (laughs) hiring. Right. So it says commenting on the surge in layoffs. Piper Sandler's chief econ- uh, economist, Nancy Lazar, says that post uh, CVPD uh, right sizing means that lots more layoffs are coming and adds that many companies overhired and overpaid during the, the, the you know, the sea crisis. All right. It says here, uh, Le- uh, Lazar also points out the obvious that. The stay at home bubble was a bubble and not a new paradigm of good consumption, which means that a right sizing cycle is coming with weaker growth in jobs and wages. Here are the stunning implications. According to Piper Sandler, we could see a million layoffs or more as many goods sectors that benefited from the the CVPD now realize they added too much capacity. Low-income workers who enjoyed the hottest wage gains during the crisis are now most at risk of layoffs. 
with remaining job holders to see much lower wage growth. Payroll gains are poised to downshift to just 100K a month on average in the second half of the year from about 515K a month through April. That's a that's a that's huge. OK, it says while the above implications are startling for the U.S. economy as a whole, they are especially bad for America's poorest quintile, which is according to Morgan Stanley calculations, now have less excess cash than they did pre-CVPD. In other words, the poorest 20% become a uh, quintile uh, income, it says, is now poorer than it was before Biden's massive stimmy bonanza. Yep. It says, with every passing month, more quintile or quintile, however you say that, will get dragged underneath. So it, they're pretty much letting you know, look, it, they're wiping out the, the middle class and they're making the poor class poor. And as you're losing these jobs, now, as 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 this economy is causing these layoffs, you got to think, well, okay, how then am I supposed to buy something to, like, if I had a job, I'd be having a hard time keeping up with all these payments. But now I've been laid off my savings is, is damn near run dry. I don't have anything. I still need to eat. I still need to pay bills. So it's game and, and then and then on top of that, you want to add possible rolling blackouts with insane heat. You know, but I bet even with all this going on, you still gonna have Jake and their mindset getting ready to party and throw barbecue parties and all of that, not realizing the danger that they're in. It says here, um, of course, the la the U.S. labor market doesn't need to go go into all out cardiac arrest. A sharp drop in wage growth should do it. And sure enough, according to Bloomberg, according to a Bloomberg report today, after handing out hefty salary increases over the past year, companies are now becoming more cautious with their cash over concern. Further big payouts will eat into profits. So now these companies are having to start to look at, okay, we may we may have overdid it, you know, the past two years. So now we got to be very careful because if we're not careful, the money we're going to need to use to start paying our employees is going to be eating into our profits. So now we may need to stop hiring people. Now we may actually need to start letting some people go. Now it says, this is a quote. We've reached a level of wage inflation where employers are going to say, I've done as much as I can, said Jonas Pricing, chief executive officer of Manpower Group Inc. Incorporated or Inc. Um, the Milwaukee based staffing company that serves more than 100,000 clients worldwide. It says my customers and customers so like it, my consumers and customers aren't going to accept me passing these costs on any further. So we need to start to mitigate them because the company needs to raise prices in order to maintain not just, you know, profits or whatnot, but also payroll and, you know, the, the, the different costs it takes to maintain that company. So when now when they have all these employees, payroll is all up. They need to keep increasing the price to, to accommodate and match that. But then the customers are going to say, look, I, I ain't trying to, I, that's too, too much. So in order to decrease the price and, and still be able to maintain the company, you need to decrease the size of the company, right? So you got to start letting some people go. Um, it says, Burning Glass Institute Chief uh, Economist Gad Levanon said the U.S. is transitioning from a demic driven job market where Americans weren't actively seeking work due to fears of the virus and related issues to one that is more traditionally tight because unemployment is low. Yeah. So when, when uh, people weren't seeking jobs, it was, you know, it was one thing. But now that the, the, the economy is doing worse and you need to start start letting people go. And freezing the hiring process, now you have people starting to seek more and more jobs. You know, so it's just like, 
all this coming at once and these these employers are saying look we, we ain't gonna be able to to to, to hold this <laughs> it says here um every company still needs people but they don't need hundreds of people said tim uh gimbo chief executive officer of chicago-based employment agency LaSalle network they're being ch uh, choosier about who they're hiring than they were six months ago you see and and, and this is this is coming at a, a bad time for american consumers the average american citizen especially the middle class you know because you now you're starting to see prices of rent you know and 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 how a living and and food going up so you need you need a job you know you need some some income to be able to accommodate for that but now they're saying look it's getting harder to get one so a lot of people are going to be be desperate as the scriptures say uh beverage well drilling inc is among those feeling the pinch the, the nebraska-based company is offering an hourly wage of $16.50 for manual labor from uh, up from $12 about a year ago. But even with 100% health care benefits and other generous perks, it can't fill all the open slots, Vice President Construction uh, Brandon Jones said. While the firm could bump up its offer to about $18 an hour, that's about as high as we feel we can do against the backdrop of rising fuel and supply costs. All of which begs the question, yes, Biden may be terrified about soaring inflation. All right, let's see. And it says, as the Fed, as for the Fed, or actually it says, but how long will he tolerate an economy and how long will an economy tolerate him? Where millions are not only about to see their wages revert back to normal, if they're lucky, while other uh, other many while many other millions are about to lose their jobs, about to lose your job, okay, facing an, a, a crashing economy with inflation through the roof. It says, as for the Fed, well, the City U.S. Eco uh, Surprise Index already crashing. One can only imagine where it will go, N uh, not if, but when we get a negative payroll print in one of the coming months and what that uh, that will do to the Fed's hiking plans. Because, man, negative payroll, that means they're starting to cut. They starting to cut the pay. And that, and, and that now is that's the time where you don't need that. You see, so a lot of people, you know, people that work retail, they work in like, you know, Th these different areas right here is going to get harder to keep these people here and they're going to start they're going to start having to let people go people are going to go home and you know they're going to try to uh, uh um you know find some other way okay but hey it's going to get so hard out here you're going to see why people are going to become desperate second Ezra the 15th chapter tells you that for the lack of bread and for great tribulation all right. Now, this is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse three. It says in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few. See, and because a lot of people are going to be losing their jobs. The grinders are the workers and those that look out of the windows be darkened and the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low and he shall rise up at the voice of a bird of the bird and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. So that's the main part right there. When the sound of the grinding is low and this this is this is the, the signs of a of a economy that's not doing so well. That's on the verge of a, of a big drop, a big crash. So as it says, we could see a million layoffs or more. So times are getting hard and companies are starting to cut, you know, so second is just 15. Remember, we're, they don't just, they're not just going to get up and do these things. They're going to there's going to be a cause for the lack of bread and for great tribulation. All right. And that's what we're seeing, you know, all around the world. So we're definitely living in, in, in uh, prophetic times. And as Yahweh Shai said, we ought to watch as well as pray. So with that, I'm going to end it here. Lord willing, that was edifying to the elect. 
In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakha Kudash. Until next time, Shalom.